Using Raycast for shooting is an easy and lightweight option when making your own first person shooter game. We'll be focusing on creating a flexible gun system using scriptable objects with adjustable options to tweak and play. In other words, you can create any weapon type you'd like. We'll also look at how to pierce bullets through any surface and detect headshots. As always, all the code and assets are available for download in the description and of course free to use in your own projects. So let's jump right into it. The scene setup is pretty simple. We've got a basic canvas with a crosshair in the center and a Texmas Pro in the bottom right corner, which will act as our ammo counter. Our player character must follow this order exactly with the following components attached. An audio source, character controller, and a collider connected to it. Inside this player, we'll have a main camera and optionally, our arms model. If you do not wish to use an arms model, just create a new game object named weapon holder parented to our camera, or find the right hand of the armature and parent it to that. First up is our weapon controller, which holds all the functionality for shooting. This will sit parented to our gun game object and instantiated with the prefab. So just for now, I'll create a new game object under our weapon holder named pistol and create a new script named weapon controller. We'll just leave that script there for now and take a step back to make our weapon data scriptable object script. In here, we'll create a range of variables which can be tweaked and adjusted per gun type. These include if the weapon is piercing or normal bullet type, automatic, ammo, fire rate, damage, reload time, headshot multiplier, range, particles, hit effects, and our prefab, which we will instantiate. Now that that's all done, we can return to our weapon controller script and set the following references. I've set my controller and ammo count as a public getter, as we're gonna go back and assign these for our player controller script. Our weapon data will hold our scriptable object information, which we can call upon regularly. Firstly, we'll get our audio source and weapon animator components in a wake and set our ammo count to max. A new method shoot, We'll then hold all our shooting behavior, which will then be called by our player controller. Firstly, we want to check if we aren't reloading, already shooting, or isn't ready to shoot, as well as an ammo check, which we can call an automatic reload if we are at zero bullets. If these are all true, then we can set our states. A few of the following methods we'll create in a moment, such as use ammo, reset attack, and attack raycast. We can then instantiate our muzzle effect at the position of the muzzle. Then play our fire sound and slightly variate the pitch which randomizes and makes sounds a lot less repetitive. Then simply enough we can play the animations on our weapon and our player controller. And now we can define our ammo method which will only remove our ammo count. Our reload method which will check if we are already reloading or at max ammo before continuing. Then play our reload animations and set our reloading state as true to prevent shooting. Reset reload and reset attack will reset our state and adjust our ammo accordingly when the actions have been finished. Moving on to our attack rate cost behavior, which switches functionality based on the weapon data's weapon type. The first being a simple bullet, which can hit one target and cause the hit function, as well as our piercing bullets, which cause this hit function on all hit targets when the attack distance is reached. If you'd like to adjust things like damage over distance and reducing damage when passing through, just a reminder to sort this list based on the distance of the hit point as the Raycast hit array we have defined is in randomized order. See the documentation on physics.raycast.org to learn more. With all that set, we can now determine our hit target method, which will just instantiate our hit effect and destroy it accordingly over time. We can now go back to our pistol object and assign our variables. Also make sure to add an audio source to our pistol and the model with an animator controller to it. The gun control animator just holds animations on the gun model, such as the slider, moving backwards, and the magazine moving, which the animator is simply set up as follows. Create a new game object inside and set the muzzle position. Make sure to position the weapon holder to the appropriate position. We can make this into a prefab and set it as our prefab in our weapon data. Now we're gonna use a singleton to control our user interface. So first up, create a new script and parent it to our canvas named user interface. A static reference must be included and set in our awake to be called in any other script. Then we can create a reference to our bullet count text and call a method which updates this taking in two integers, which will hold our ammo count and our max ammo. Then just set up our text to display the following. Now we can go back into our weapon controller and call this method every time we update our bullets. In our reset reload script, use ammo and awake every time we use or adjust our ammo count. Now just for setting up the input, I'll be using the same player controller from my last first person tutorial, which I'll quickly show on screen now. Pause now if you'd like to read it, otherwise any other player controller will do. The player animator controller is pretty simple, just setting our shoot, reload and idle animations, only creating a return arrow to idle from reload and shoot. We're using the new input system so we'll quickly have to go back and set a new combine for our behaviors on our input action asset. If you don't have one, just right click in the project view and create a new input actions and add the following keybinds, which will control our player. Again, I won't focus on the movement controls and we'll go straight into creating a new action for shooting, which has an action type of button, 
set the left mouse button, and in must contain a press action that is press and release. Our next input is our reload, and simply it just has an action type of button and set the R keyboard key. With that all set up, we can now set our new input actions on our player controller. Although we need a few variables to spawn in a weapon, and call on it when needed. The first being a private reference to our current weapon controller, and transform of our weapon holder position and a reference to our default weapon data, which will spawn at the start of the game. The only method we'll need is a simple set weapon, which will take in a new weapon as our parameter. It will check if we have an existing weapon, destroying it if so, then instantiating and setting our reference to the current weapon. Make sure to set the my controller variable back inside our weapon controller script, so that they may call upon each other. For now, I've just called the function in our awake script, and setting the weapon to our default weapon. Right now it's just spawning in our default weapon when we load in, but we can call the set weapon method when picking up weapons or clicking user interface very easily to spawn in new weapons on our player. Now with that all done, we can finally assign our inputs accordingly, calling our current weapon shoot and reload script. Within our update method, we'll also check if the shoot button is pressed and our weapon is automatic to continuously fire. To finish up, we'll just create a quick enemy system. Create an empty game object, name it enemy, and create a new actor script on it. The script will hold its current and max health, and hold a take damage method, which will reduce its health and check for death if the actor's health drops below zero. It's as simple as that. Now we can go back to our enemy, and I've just quickly created a scaled down capsule for the body, and a box for its head. For its head, we just need to set a new tag on it, named head. Simple enough, we can go back now, into our hit target method inside our weapon controller script and we can try to get the actor controller on all hit objects and if that object is found then we can check the tag and deal damage accordingly based on our headshot multiplier and that's all your fps framework is set up it's pretty bare bones at the moment and i suggest adding things like weapon sway and recoil to really liven it up if you enjoyed the video or found it useful please subscribe and like the video you can also find me on my discord server and other social media to support my content thanks again